Hi, I'm Michael Picard. How to Play Philosophy is my new book. It's a collection of texts, mostly essays, composed with the particular purpose of stimulating readers to think philosophically. The topics were chosen by participants at Cafe Philosophy, the public participatory philosophy event I hosted weekly in Victoria, Canada for over 12 years. My approach to these crowdsourced topics was also inspired by those same participants, who were the original readers of the book. It was to prime their thinking on weekly topics that I began to write these essays and to circulate them by email in advance of our live dialogues. With that as my aim, it would never have done in these essays to proffer and defend my own opinions. My role as a dialogue facilitator had to be carried over into the writing. I had to represent philosophical controversies from a variety of viewpoints so that participants could make up their own minds. I took it to be my job to offer, as if in a well-arranged bouquet, an assortment of perspectives on our weekly topic, in order not to narrow them down or to settle us all upon a shared conclusion, but instead to increase available options for opinion. It's easy to be provocative, but that was not my purpose. Far better, I thought, to embody wonder, curiosity, and playful humor in order to make the sometimes hard and bitter medicine of philosophy go down the more sweetly. So the book is for people who are thinking their way through things and are still up for a challenge, not for those who are hankering for settled truths or well-trodden paths. I hope you like it. What is perhaps most distinctive about this book of philosophy is the playful character evident in many of its essays, and which of course lends the book its title. The spirit of play does not detract from the serious intent of the book, for the gravity of philosophical problems is never made light of, its pedagogic mission never lost sight of. The writing might be called teacherly, and the book is suitable reading for undergraduates. Indeed, I use it in some of my own courses as a supplemental text. Yet the book is not laid out as a textbook, not organized from elementary to advance, and is worlds away from the dry exegesis from which many secondary treatments of the big problems in philosophy suffer. Frankly, I assume more emotional and intellectual sophistication on the part of my readers, though not a background in academic philosophy. This generous assumption can be seen in the free use of literary devices in many of the essays, and which represent yet another level of the play referred to in the book's title. I resort to such devices not for mere entertainment, nor even simply to beautify but to communicate layers of significance and to dramatize differences in views for more engaged reflection and reconsideration. Had my purpose been to establish my authorial conclusions in the reader's mind, ambiguity would have been a pitfall, and paradoxes would have been put forward only to be resolved and straightened out. But I take ambiguity to be an endemic feature, not wholly innocent, of language, not a bug, as it is in attempts at literal proof. As such, puns can be used to reset thinking, and the power of paradox be exploited and may even become the very engine of thought, as one reviewer of an earlier ebook edition have said of my writing. So get your copy of How to Play Philosophy and let me know what you think. Review it on Amazon, share it on social media, and keep playing philosophy. Thank you.